Hello science fans! Have you checked out the night sky recently? If you have, you might have seen a shooting star or two or three or so many. Because it is the Lyrid meteor shower season. The Lyrid meteor shower is an annual meteor shower that occurs in mid to late April. It is named after the constellation Lyra or Lyra, where the meteors appear to originate from in the night sky. The Lyrids are one of the oldest known meteor showers, with records of their appearance dating back more than 2,700 years. The Lyrid meteor shower is caused by the Earth passing through the debris left behind by the comet C1861G1 Thatcher. As the debris enters Earth's atmosphere, it burns up and creates a streak of light in the sky, known as a meteor or shooting star. The peak of the Lyrid meteor shower usually occurs around April 22nd, but meteors can already be seen several days before and after that. During the peak, it's possible to see up to 10 to 20 meteors per hour under dark skies. But why do we have meteor showers in the first place? Should we be worried that they're occurring? But before we answer those questions using science, Welcome to our new viewers. My name is Chona and I'm your resident Filipina scientist. I'm a researcher who used to want to be an astronaut and fly off into space. I'm also a teacher with the De La Salle University who loves to talk about the various intersections between scientific and non-scientific fields. And Xiensha is my science communication channel where I talk about the science behind things that I find fascinating. So. What are meteor showers? Meteor showers are astronomical events that occur when the Earth passes through the trail of debris left behind by a comet or asteroid. When the Earth intersects with this debris, the particles collide with the Earth's atmosphere. They then heat up and glow, causing bright streaks across the night sky. Most meteor showers occur annually as the Earth moves through the same region of space at the same time each year crossing the path of the debris left by a specific comet or asteroid. The size and intensity of the meteor shower can vary depending on factors such as the size of the debris field, the density of the particles, and the position of Earth in its orbit. Meteor showers are named after the constellation from which the meteors appear to originate. For example, the Perseid meteor shower is named after the constellation Perseus because the meteors appear to come or originate from that part of the night sky. Meteor showers are not typically dangerous to people on the ground. The meteors that create the meteor shower are usually small rocks and debris that burn up in the Earth's atmosphere and they never reach the ground. While they can create spectacular streaks of light in the sky, they are generally harmless. However, it is important to note that there are some rare cases where large meteoroids made it across the Earth's atmosphere and caused damage on the ground. What? These events are known as meteorite impacts, and while they are rare, they can be dangerous. Throughout history, Earth has experienced some notable meteorite impacts, which has caused consequences on its inhabitants. Here are a few examples. The Shikshulub impact. This is perhaps the most famous meteorite impact in history. It occurred approximately 66 million years ago, when a comet or asteroid about 10 to 15 kilometers in diameter hit what is now known as the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. The impact caused a global cataclysm, leading to the extinction of the dinosaurs and many other species. And then, there's the Tunguska event. In 1908, a massive explosion occurred in the skies above the Tunguska region of Siberia, Russia. The cause of the explosion is believed to be a meteoroid or comet fragment with an estimated diameter of 50 to 100 meters. The explosion flattened an estimated 2,000 square kilometers of forest and released the equivalent energy of 10 to 15 megatons of TNT. Then there's the Barringer Crater. This impact crater, also known as Meteor Crater, 
is located in northern Arizona and was formed approximately 50,000 years ago by the impact of a meteorite approximately 50 meters in diameter. The resulting crater is approximately 1.2 kilometers in diameter and about 170 meters deep. And then there's the Chelyabinsk meteor. In 2013, a meteoroid approximately 20 meters in diameter entered the Earth's atmosphere over Russia and exploded in the skies above the city of Chelyabinsk. The explosion released the energy equivalent of approximately 500 kilotons of TNT, causing widespread damage and injuring 1,000 people. Currently, there is no guaranteed way to stop a meteorite impact. No! God, please, no! 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 But scientists and researchers are trying to figure out the best way in order to mitigate the risks. Here are a few examples. First is detection and tracking. One of the most effective ways to prevent meteorite strikes is to detect and track potentially hazardous objects before they reach the Earth. A number of telescopes and observatories are dedicated for this activity, and international efforts are also being done to improve our capability to detect and track near-Earth objects. And then there's diversion techniques. If a potentially hazardous object is detected, scientists may be able to divert it from its collision course with Earth. Possible diversion techniques include gravitational tractor beams, kinetic impactors, and even laser ablation. And then, of course, there's preparation and response. In the event that a meteorite strike does occur, it is important to have systems in place to mitigate the damage and protect human life. This could include emergency response plans, evacuation efforts, and the creation of technology to quickly assess the damage of the meteorite impact. While these strategies are still in development, they offer hope that we may be able to reduce the risk of meteorite strikes in the future. And it is important for all of us to note that there will always be a risk of objects from outer space hitting the surface of our planet. And so we must continue on with the research and technology development in order to mitigate this risk. Thankfully, meteorite impacts are rare. And we do have scientists and engineers all over the world that are working round the clock to figure out the best ways to mitigate the risk. So we don't have to worry about them too much. But luckily also, meteor showers are common and happen regularly. So if you're too busy this week to watch the Lyrid meteor shower, here are some amazing celestial events that you can look forward to. The Perseids. This meteor shower occurs in mid-August and is one of the most popular and well-known meteor showers, often referred to as the Fireball Champion. It is known for its bright and colorful meteors, and at its peak, it is known to produce up to 100 shooting stars per hour. Then there's the Orionids. This meteor shower occurs in late October and is named after the constellation Orion, from which the meteors appear to originate. It is known for its fast-moving but bright meteors, and it can produce up to 20 meteors per hour at its peak. There's also the Leonids. This meteor shower occurs in mid-November and is named after the constellation Leo. It is also known for its bright, fast-moving meteors, and it is even known to produce meteor storms in certain years. The Leonids can produce up to 15 meteors per hour at its peak. And then there's the Quadrantids. This meteor shower occurs in early January and is named after the now-defunct constellation Quadrans Muralis. It also has bright and colorful meteors, and it can produce up to as much as 100 meteors per hour at its peak. Meteor showers are spectacular sights to behold, and they're free to watch. Imagine seeing dozens to even hundreds of shooting stars at their peak in the night sky. To observe a meteor shower, it's of course best to find a dark location away from city lights. Lie down in a comfortable position and look up at the sky. 
and give your eyes time to adjust to the darkness. It's not necessary to have special equipment or even binoculars, but it may be good if you have a blanket with you, some snacks, and especially good company in order to make the experience more enjoyable. So what do you think? Aren't meteor showers more fascinating than any TV series? Do meteor showers excite you or do they make you nervous? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. <laughs>